Alrighty, good morning. It is, well, what day is it now? Let me look and see. It's Friday, September the 15th, 2023. And it is 7.58 a.m. Mm -hmm. Now we know what day it is. Well, I do. Anyway, you might already have known, but there's Rocky. Look at my beautiful Rocky cat, if you can see him there in the screen. <laughs> Morning, Rocky. He's a good boy. Anyway, here we go. I don't know how he's doing, really. He hasn't pooped since yesterday morning. I did make him some more poop fuel over there with the pumpkin mix and the cat food and stuff. And we'll see. And the oil, the salmon oil. We'll see if he eats it and maybe his bowels will move again. We can hope, anyway. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Uh, what I want to talk about today, and again, this is something that may be off-putting to some, and it may get me into some trouble, but I'm going to talk about the world situation from a spiritual perspective, because I think oftentimes we neglect the spiritual aspect of the whole thing. We're being affected physically, and so we forget that there's a spiritual component to it. Now, I have a belief about all of this, <clears throat> and I'm going to share my belief with you. You know, I do have Christian beliefs. I won't say that I'm perfect at practicing, because I'm not, but I do have Christian beliefs, and I have a theory about what's going on in the world today. And my theory has to do with demonic influence and demonic forces, and, you know, with like the Bible talks about how we're not in a flesh and blood situation. We're actually dealing with principalities, spiritual principalities, you know. And um, I believe that's what we're dealing with here. I believe that the same spirits that were active in Rome and in different really awful, um, under you know, bad systems that existed over the years, I believe that those spirits are active today. The spirits that were active in Rome that caused all the bad stuff that happened in Rome, you know, the, all the immorality, all the um, excesses, all the persecution of, of, of the early Christians, all that, and ultimately caused the fall of Rome. You know, I believe those spirits are still active today. I believe those spirits were quite active during the 20, during the 30s and 40s, oh, in Europe, you know, I believe that the Nazi powers were heavily influenced by demonic forces. And see, the thing is, the people are gone. Obviously, the people who ran the Roman Empire are long gone. They're, they're dead for thousands of years. The people who ran Nazi Germany are gone. I mean, we hung a lot of them after the war, and even the ones we didn't hang have just died by attrition. Adolf Hitler would be 140 years old if he was still alive, so obviously he's long gone. Even if you believe the stories that he escaped and went to Argentina and that, the, you know, the burned corpse or whatever they found at his bunker, but that, that was all staged, even if you believe that, there's no way that man is still alive at this point, you know, like I say, he'd be, he'd be 140 years old. It doesn't make any sense that he would be still alive. But the thing is, the evil spirits that inhabited him, they don't die. They don't die like we do. And they just find new victims and new targets and new bodies to inhabit and so on. And... I believe the same evil spirits that were active during World War II are active now in a big way. I believe a lot of those spirits went to the Eastern Bloc after World War II, you know, to East Germany, to Russia, to Ukraine, Czechoslovakia, Poland, places like that. And that's why we saw a lot of atrocities being committed in those places under communism. And I believe that these evil spirits use communism and fascism. And what we're seeing now, and that they're attracted to that. And the thing is, what we're seeing now 
is kind of a hybrid of both communism and fascism. Like people will say, oh, our government is communist. Well, no, it's not really communist. Or they'll say it's fascist, but it's not really fascist either. What we're seeing is a conglomeration of the two things, which we'd never seen before because <clears throat> old-style communism and old-style fascism, even though they were equally harmful, they didn't mix very well. In fact, they regarded each other as enemies. But see, you know, I suppose evil spirits learn just like we do. And they evolve probably like we do too. And I think they figured out that they were fighting against themselves and a house divided cannot stand. And so what's happened now is they've joined forces. They've, they've realized now that communism and fascism, a combination of the two, is more powerful than they each are individually and, and as enemies of each other. So what they've done now is they've become communist slash fascist, and they're inhabiting um, our leaders, basically. Our leaders are essentially demonically possessed individuals. At this point, our Prime Minister here in Canada, the President of the United States, all these high government officials around the world that are participating in this globalist agenda, in this you will have nothing and be happy. 95% um, of you have to die. You can't be here anymore, and so on. We're going to put you in a smart city, which is an open-air prison. We're going to control you if we let you live. Um, we're talking about Fabian socialism here, which says that uh, if you don't contribute more to society than you take, you ought to be done away with. <clears throat> That's why there's no um, provision made in the smart cities for the elderly or the handicapped. Now, when you think about it, under the Christian um under Christian philosophy, if you're living under a Christian philosophy, you have respect for your elders, and you see the value in everybody as a child of God, if you're practicing a true Christian philosophy. Now, there are people who hide behind Christianity, but they don't really, you know, they have a philosophy that isn't Christian, but they hide behind that. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who genuinely practice Christianity in the way that it's supposed to be practiced. If you do that, then you see the value in everybody. Like I know for myself, I respect the elderly people. And yeah, okay, they're not contributing what they once did. They're not out working every day, you know, making money and contributing to the economy like they did. But I give them credit for the years that they did that. You know, and I see value in them in terms of their experiences, in terms of what they've learned. You know, if you've been on this earth 70, 80, or 90 years, you probably learned something. You probably learned something that I haven't learned yet in my 55 years, so maybe I need to listen to you. Maybe, I, maybe you have some knowledge that's of value to me. And so, you know, and look, the way I look at it is, Everything that we're enjoying now was built by those people. We owe them. We owe these people. These elderly people, we owe them. These are our parents and our grandparents. We owe them. And they're entitled now to take it easy because their bodies have broke down from many years of work. And they're entitled to the rest now they're entitled to enjoy their lives as best they can. They're entitled to, I don't know, sit with their grandchildren and tell them stories and go for walks and do whatever they want to do. Take vacations if they can afford to, whatever. They're entitled to do that. And they, don't, they shouldn't be regarded as useless eaters just because they're no longer contributing in the way they once did. You see... But if you get into a communist or a fascist society, that's a whole different thing. Then there's no value there. You know, you're no longer able to pull that lever on the machine to crank out those widgets. So you're no longer of any value to us. Go away. You know, why should we pay you a pension? What do you do? That's, 
you know, and that's that's Fabian socialism, and that's what we're that's what we're getting into now in Canada and the United States and and in so many other countries, and it's demonic. Make no mistake about it. Any philosophy that tells you that you should not respect other people, that you should not value other people, is demonic. Any philosophy that tells you that other people shouldn't be here, that they should just die because they're useless, that's demonic. Any philosophy that tells you that you should have to forego your God-given free will to be a member of the group, that's demonic. It's all demonic. You know, you wonder about the horrors of the concentration camps in the 1940s. You know how that happened? It was demonic. It was a demonic thing. And the same demons that were behind that are behind what's going on now. You know, I mean, look, I have no use for Justin Trudeau, our prime minister. I, I think he's horrible. I have no use for him. But I'll tell you something about that man. He is inhabited by demons. I guarantee you he's inhabited by demons. He's not in control of himself. He doesn't know what he's doing. Or he doesn't have the um, ability to care because that's been robbed of him by the demonic entities that are inhabiting him. 